Salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to Three Peas in a Pod, episode 245. We made it. And as I promised last week, uh, just a few weeks, here we are removed from Halloween. Yeah. Someone asked, probably asked this question around Halloween. Mm. We're just now mm, getting yes. to it because this is when people often think of this. In fact, sermon you preached not too long ago, mm-hmm. Nathan, you talked about your love of all things supernatural horror films. I do like horror films. Yes, do. I do. What, what is your favorite uh, franchise or movie in that Ooh. genre? Ooh, franchise. Because they come in franchises. They do. They do usually. tend to have one. We were. I was having this conversation with someone else. So the best horror franchise, I think the most consistent horror franchise is probably the Scream franchise. My daughter would totally agree with you. Yeah, she they're loves they're screen. really good. They mm-hmm. they've been pretty consistent. Only one that's not very good. Mm-hmm. I'd say when it comes to possession stuff, the new Conjuring movies are really good. Yeah, I've heard that as well. So mm-hmm. haven't watched those. They're good. I Aren't mean, if you they like, supposed to be based on truth. Yeah, they're is based on the uh, women, uh, the the woman and the man. I think they're husband and wife. yeah, they are. They're husband and wife who are going to our question today. They're not Catholic priests, but they have been. They're the people who did, if you remember the Amityville Horror, okay. they're, they're, they're the real life people who went to like deal with the Amityville Horror. Uh, Lorraine and Ed Warren yeah. is their name. I saw a documentary on them one time. They're the ones who, who did all that. They are not, I think he was studying to be a Catholic priest, but then mm-hmm. chose not to. And then all through the 60s, 70s, and 80s, <clears throat> they were like go to in America for the Catholic Church would send them in because I think. For a while, the I mean, going to this, I think for a while the Catholic Church was not doing exorcisms in America hmm. because there had been a lot of like legal trouble. <coughs> okay. People were getting injured and such, and so these people they could go in unofficially. That's the way I remember the story, at least. And then that's the official version we'll go with. And that's the official three peas in a pod version. There you go. So here's the question for today. What's the deal with exorcisms? Are they only done through Catholic priests today? Is there a risk to a lay person who performs one that they might become possessed? And what happens to the demon? <laughs> what happens to what the happens demon? What happens to him? We feel bad for the demon. Can we, somebody we really can do. somebody please help yeah. that demon? That demon's out of work. <laughs> we gotta get that demon back <laughs> on his feet. Gotta get him a job. Gotta get him back to work. I know, I know a few places oh, yeah. that he might be uh, fitting in. That's uh, right. But I won't say. Mm-hmm. Who thinks of a bizu? That's what I want to know. Abizu the demon. What? Who's looking out for Abizu? Is that a real name, or did you I, make that? No, up? that's one I've heard, but I don't know what it is. I don't okay, know it is. I don't have enough. I'm not a demonologist. Me neither. So uh, I don't. Me know. either. Mm. I don't want to be. No. So do we have any answers to these questions? Not. Or are we going to just cut this I, short? I, I have an answer to the one about being in danger because the Bible deals with it about the the people who want to copy Paul, mm-hmm. who's and. They follow him around. They want the power, and they start going out on their own, claiming the ability to do it, and calling on Jesus, and mm-hmm. in the name of Paul. And the demon finally just turns on him and says, "I know Jesus. I know Paul. Who are you?" Yeah. <laughs> and then it the demon go well and then it does not go well for those people. Yeah. So I just say, uh, you, you should be really called by Jesus to do this, or you probably ought to just let that go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I, there's a lot of specifics in those questions that um, I'll just be quite frank with. It, is not given to us. We aren't no, given right. these specifics like, you know, how is it done and what's the risk and mm-hmm. what happens to the demon that gets cast out. We don't, we're yeah. not given that information mm-hmm. in the scripture, not in a specific kind of way. I mean, we see accounts of Jesus uh, casting out demons. At, at once, and the apostles. And the apostles. And... There are, you know, uh, there's a there is a segment of the Catholic Church that is still practicing mm-hmm. this. In fact, I think I heard somebody just uh, who is a part of that speak on this the other day. It was kind of like one of those TED talks that, mm-hmm. in a Christian setting that they gave, and they talk about you know the work that they do in this space, and of course they have lots of you know accounts and stories to yeah. talk about. Um, so uh, I'm not one of those that's you know saying it doesn't exist anymore or should oh, sure. No. Sure. Um, but um, I have no personal experience with it. So Yeah, I've never had to have the, thankfully, never had to have the services of some of, of, of an exorcist. Mm-hmm. I know there are, and you say only Catholic priests, I know there are Protestant people That's sure right. uh, who, who certainly practice this. And uh, I had a professor in college that got involved in it, lost his 
seat at the place that he was teaching mm -hmm. because of it. Oh, wow. And I have his book on, on my shelf mm -hmm. and read it when I was younger. I had an encounter with a person when I was young in ministry who, uh, I don't know what they're demon. They, they, it, it was the weirdest experience I've had in my life mm -hmm. uh, with a person. So you believe this person? I think I've heard you tell the story. You believe this person had maybe they, was possessed. They, they said they thought they were. They believed they were. Okay. And there were certainly things that occurred when they were with me just mm -hmm. scared the young Ed to death. And mm -hmm. I didn't know how to, I yeah. didn't know what to do. I mm -hmm. didn't know what to do. I was, you know, recently new Christian and, you know, the weird things. There were weird things that took place in the encounter mm -hmm. that they were scared of. And they, the things they experienced while they were with me, I yeah. also was scared of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I tried to get them help and then I never heard from them again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. that's a, that's my total experience. Mm -hmm. uh, they were involved in a large, yeah. and I don't mean to stir up anything with anybody, a Wiccan group that was in the area mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think in most of the things I read about it is it is far less common in uh, maybe like developed nations. Yes, I read the same things. Than, mm -hmm. than it is, and pro most likely... Um, and I had someone have this conversation after I said I liked horror movies. They wanted to come ask me about are you are are we opening ourselves up to the to the demons by watching the demon movies? And I get that, and I think that I get why people have that sort of fear around it. And what I would say is my understanding has been, at least from people who work in these kind of things, uh, work in these kind of fields, is part of the reason in less developed nations you tend to see what we characterize more as demonic possession um, is because people are more open to spirits. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is more of a, you have to be caught. What I understand is you, you need to be cognizant of, I want to interact with these mm -hmm. spirits and I'm open to this, which yeah. is why Jesus says to the apostles that, hey, or the disciples at the time, he says, you know, when you remove these demons from someone, you got to replace that with this Holy Spirit. The people have the Holy Spirit inside. He's a strong man. He'll defend the house. You're not, these demons are not going to overtake the Holy Spirit, but there are ways in which we open, we, we are open. Now, I don't think watching a horror movie necessarily does that because, and I said this to the person. Because you're not open to that. Well, and the point of the horror movie, there are a few that aren't this way. And honestly, I think, I think, we tried to do this with the Family Movie Night podcast. I actually think there are a lot more dangerous message out there that have any that have way less to do with uh, with than horror movies because I think we are not good at reading media. What I mean is even the things that we watch. The point of a horror movie is to say you don't want this nonsense yeah. in your life. When you watch a horror, you don't watch it and go, now that seems mm -hmm. interesting. I bet my life would be better if I conjured something up. Yeah. You watch it and you go, ooh, I want to stay away from something like that. I don't, that's what it inspires within me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a different feel. That, and then there are movies we watch. Uh, and you watch them, and the sinful behavior you see on screen, you do want to participate in that. Mm -hmm. That might be more damaging to you. Yeah. Well, certainly in the message you talked about yesterday, this, and we talked about the spiritual reality of money, anybody, uh, I, I can tell you for sure, and I had this conversation with somebody yesterday, I have heard money speak to me, mm -hmm. an audible voice, mm -hmm. but... Uh, I have several instances where the uh, voice of money calling me to turn my back on what God would want mm -hmm. in my life has been really, really uh, overpower uh, not overpowering because I did turn away from it. But uh, if you don't believe there's a spiritual reality in our country mm. having been formed on the base, and, and I, I can't we have a motto, one nation under God, and pilgrims came for religious freedom. Well, and we put it and, on the and, and they came for religious freedom and land that they thought they could take away from people that didn't have the mm -hmm. sense to protect it. Yeah. Uh, so, and we, so the whole thing, uh, boy, I'm really dwelling in dangerous country, just talking about the United States right now. <laughs> but uh, we, we, our capitalism has bred something in us. Sure. Well, that, Politicians on either side know they can get a dog whistle by talking about 
hey, it's just the economy. And uh, when you have the greatest economy in the world mm. and people still are crying for more, mm -hmm. more, more. I mean, currently I just heard the other day, in my home state, the residents of Mississippi, which is not as known as a really wealthy state, mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh, the per capita income there is greater than most of the countries in Europe. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and yet everybody in our country thinks we have a problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. There might be something involved there yes. that mm -hmm. has made us think that. Yes. And uh, maybe that's what we ought to be aware of. And if you. Well, and to your point, we all could sit here and just think about and point to examples of the most depraved, mm -hmm. evil, mm -hmm. sinister reactions and behavior that we have seen from people that we would, if we're honest, would say that is from a demonic influence yes, absolutely. that came about because of greed sure, and the pursuit of wealth. There is so much that we can justify. So just to use that example as one right. example of a demonic <clears throat> uh, influence in our lives, whenever we give ourselves over to those kinds of things, I'm not saying we're possessed in the way that this yes. person asked the question, well, but we are succumbing to a demonic influence. Well, and we in know that moment. Uh, the one that all of us experience, whether we want to admit it, how you know, how tough or strong you are, mm -hmm. there is, I think, uh, fear that drives so many of us to do mm -hmm. wrong, evil things to each other mm -hmm. or to ourselves. Yes or to use substances of all kinds to deal with the feelings of fear I have. Mm -hmm. The Bible is really clear. The fear does not come from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So then you have to go, so where does that come from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it doesn't come from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, we try all kinds of ways to deal with that other than just trust. You know, I've got to trust the Lord. There are tools I need. I need people to come alongside and help me, not downplay. That's also true with the problem with money. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of us need to be have an exorcism on our money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big time. Well, and I do think, to you know, I know the question is about exorcisms, and maybe it's because you're just, you find it, like you said, you're watching a horror movie, you're yeah. like, I wonder what's up with Or this maybe thing. there's a bigger thing. Yeah. Well, and I, but I do think... And I said this in the sermon on money, and I really do think this is a bigger thing. We have scrubbed clean our American Western worldview to a point that everything is purely secular. Right. And what I mean by secular is there's no spiritual component. It is purely, uh, you know, mind and body and rational and mathematics and scientific. And if I can break everything down, I can fix all my own problems at some point. And even that, there is a level to which any of these things you talk about, whether you talk about greed, whether you talk about racism, whether you talk about sexism, whether you talk about whatever the thing is that we look at, or you talk about sins in my own personal life. I think anybody who has been trapped in habitual, repetitive, maybe even addictive, you might say, sin, there is a place that your not only your mind gets, your spirit gets to that is the only word I can think of to say is it's oppressive. It is, mm -hmm. I can feel the weight of something that's not me sitting on top of me. And I, and I, my wife and I, we frequently use those words with each other. As I'll say, I know that I'm really struggling right now and I know there are things I need, but I really need you to pray for me. Mm -hmm. Because I think this is spiritual oppression as well. I think that the enemy is happy and like we've said, does it, that doesn't take away from any of the mental health work I may have no, to do no. or the physical no, no, health no. work I had to do. All of those are tools God uses to break the bonds. Yes, yes. and and all of those, those, you could say, traumas that happen or any of those things are doorways that the enemy looks at and goes, I, if I start working on that thing, that's, a, the, that's where these thoughts can get in my head. And so there's things in my life that I, look, that I will allow myself to get overwhelmed by. And then I feel there's this other thing speaking to me. This voice is not just me. This is not just my own self-talk going on. There are thoughts, I've, and they're dark thoughts, and they're uh, 
angry thoughts. They're thoughts that I think about people in my life that I dearly love and I, I assign the worst motives to them. I assign the worst um, the, the, the worst characteristics, things I know aren't even true about them, but I go, but what if they are? What if this whole time, you know what I mean? You start yeah, taking these things. Right. And I, when I look at that, I go, that doesn't all just come from me. Now, yeah, I, may, sure. I may be engaging with it, but there is a level two. And once again, it doesn't mean possessions. I, right. I, 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 honestly, I think in our world, the devil goes, I don't even you don't have need to possess to do you. That. I don't need to possess mm-hmm. you because I can just start whispering these thoughts and you'll do the rest for me. Well, well I think in our culture, if it, the reason he has chosen to do that is because to come out and out and and lean into that just completely and come out and reveal himself the way that we see in movies would actually defeat his, his purpose. purposes. I mean, I think about, you know, we've all, we've all read, you, you should probably read the screw tape letters by mm-hmm. C.S. Lewis. Right. He does a good job in that book of uh, uncovering some of that uh, work. But it was the, the person I, I mentioned earlier that uh, actually does uh, exorcism for the Catholic church, he, he made this statement in his talk and I thought it's wise and it's what you're talking about, Nathan. He said, the mistake we make about demons and Satan's power and, and work in this world is that we either we make the mistake of either giving him way too much credit yes. or way too little. Yes. That's right. And what you're talking about is understanding that everything in my yes. life that I I give power over to him is I'm coming under the influence mm, of that's a, right. of a demonic uh, influence. But it's not all the way that I am fully possessed. That's it, right. But to di- but to then ignore and say, well it, He's not active at all. And there's no spiritual nature to anything. That's, right. That's a mistake too. That's right. Well, and it's part of his tactic because if he mm-hmm. can convince me all of those dark thoughts are me, yeah, then I start having. And I know, I know you've talked about this with people that you've worked with. Yeah. You start having thoughts of what's so terrible about me that I'm having these incredibly dark thoughts. Mm-hmm. Well, all those thoughts didn't come from me. That's right. Or you begin to say. Everybody has these thoughts. I'm just honest about them. Well, everybody is this way. I've had there com- is nobody that's. I've had conversation, and then that leads to even further division between me and other people. Because if I assume everyone thinks the horrible thoughts I think about them, and they're thinking them about me, why would I ever trust you? That's right. Because now I'm in a place where we're doing. I, I had to say that to one of my kids the other day. He said, "Every person is every is angry every single day," and I said, "No." I said, not every single day. I said, everyone feels angry at some point. I said, but not everyone's general disposition. And I said, I understand why yours is. And that's the way she's wired up. You know, that's her kind of trigger emotion. When she goes, one of, one of my daughters, hers is, I'm going to break down and feel sad and cry. And I said, that's everyone's wired a different way. I said, but to assume everyone views the world the way I view the world. I said, is not a healthy way. You have to start asking people questions of saying, Hey, what are, what are you feeling right now? What do you think right now? Because it opens me up. Things that lead me not to trust God, not to trust myself to God, and not to trust myself to other people automatically are not helpful to me. Mm-hmm. If I have people around, and again, there are untrustworthy people. Sure, absolutely. absolutely. But absolutely. when I begin to apply what some people have done to me to all right. people, mm-hmm. the enemy is already winning mm-hmm. because I was built my my spirit and soul i am requ- i require other people to have interaction with me i am i cannot be healthy in isolation mm-hmm. i just right. can't yeah That's mentally right. spiritually i just yeah. can't be healthy in isolation mm-hmm. and so many of us walk through and have things happen to us and there are bad things that happen and our first thoughts is i can't trust anybody anymore mm-hmm. uh, or why would god let this happen those thoughts in and of themselves do not come just from within you. Mm-hmm. Those are thoughts that are sown. I mean, they're the original thoughts. You know, God yeah. said to you, mm-hmm. you shouldn't eat that because God knows you, you know, he don't want you to be like him. That's right. That's a don't trust God. Don't trust God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You ought to just trust yourself. Mm-hmm. And now you can't tell your husband, or, you know, you got to get him to buy in with you so he'll be just as guilty as you. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So that's all I'd say about this is we don't have a lot of direct questions about this, but I do think, and the way Jason kind of paired it up, I think is a good way is to to fall into this, everything's the devil and the devil's controlling me somehow. And that's probably not very helpful, but also going to everything comes from me or other people is also probably not help, helpful because the Bible is written from an entire worldview that Jesus seemed to, to, to hold, which is that 
there are spiritual forces at work in this world at all times, and we are interacting with them. And it seems to be that the goal of his kingdom is to free us from the kingdom of darkness, or as he says, the prince of the power of the air. That's how Paul puts it at one point, is to free us from that kingdom to another kingdom. It is about who do you want to align yourself with? And we have the freedom of, as in all of these things, I can apply if I, if I trust my life to Jesus, he will help me work through all of this, and he frees me from that other power so that I can live in a healthy way. And I think that's the key for us. There you go. So don't worry. You're good. Yes, <laughs> but don't mess around with no Just demons. don't mess around with <laughs> Don't mess around with no demons. That's right. Stick with Jesus. He, he got you back. And yeah. you don't have to watch scary movies. Just stop like telling me I can't. <laughs> That's right. You don't have to watch them, but I like them. And again, if you trust Jesus, yeah. Jesus is taking care of the demon in the right way the demon should be taking care That's of. Right. That's right. Whatever happens to him. Whatever happens to him. Yeah. They, you know, one it time was, they went to the pigs. Other That's times right. They just and then they away. went off a cliff, but we don't know what happened. We don't know what happened we don't after happen. that. So, you we know, we don't know. We just, yeah. All right. Come back next week. Uh, we will have uh, another question for you, and uh, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.